that is, I think, the best part of his game, although he's extremely athletic. And I, I think as he continues to develop and Derek Dooley, the offensive coordinator, gets more comfortable with him, figures him out, this offense has the potential to be extremely explosive. It's an offense with eight straight games of 31 points or more. And they've outscored their opponents 51-0 in the first quarter, but that's not the stat Missouri cares about. They've lost three in a row to the Gamecocks. Not first down. Bryant throwing out right. Missiles one complete to the 32, and that'll be first down yardage. Jonathan Nance with his sixth reception of the year. All right, Bryant shows you his athleticism and his ability to throw on the run right there on that first play. See his numbers. And I tell you, Missouri won the Bryant sweepstakes last January and got him to transfer here, and that was a huge get for Barry Odom and his staff. Tree, the lone back. And they'll feed the big man. It's stacked up pretty well by the left side of that Gamecock defensive line. Thomas Jones in on the stop for Carolina. There is the starting lineup for Mizzou. Albert O, also known as Albert Okue Bunam, one of the top tight end targets in the country, a potential first round draft pick. Second down and nine with a man in motion. That's Johnson Bryant under duress, and that ball is almost picked off near the line of scrimmage. Aaron Sterling, the junior out of Atlanta, Georgia, got one of his paws on it. Sterling did a really nice job of recognition. Saw it was going to be a little drop screen there. He put on the brakes on his pass rush and was right in the throwing lane for Bryant. He kind of had to just drop it down on the ground. Now a third down opportunity here, third down and nine. Bryant works out of the gun. Gamecocks rushing just three. Bryant in trouble. Under duress. Now shifting gears. And finally brought down at the 44-yard line. T.J. Brunson with a nice open field tackle. He was the leading tackler the last two years for Carolina. And they expected Bryant to scramble. You see the two defensive tackles both sat back and spied him and <laughs> Bryant was able to get away but they forced him to run around enough so that other guys could show up and make the tackle before the chains. And the Gamecock defense holds on its first challenge of the day. Brian Edwards back to receive the punt the senior from Conway. Tucker McCann who does it all. One of the top kicking and punting weapons in the country. And will take a Missouri bounce and it is going to roll dead inside the five. Tucker McCann. Eighth time he has sent a punt inside the 20. A 52 yard punt and no return. And now we'll get our first look at the aforementioned Ryan Holinsky. Freshman out of Orange, California. Family moving to Columbia, Lake Murray to be exact. Once he decided to go to the Gamecocks. And the thing that just jumps off the film, Ray Bentley, is when you watch him, the quick release stands out. Yeah, that's what really impressed me. And, and that and his composure. I mean, as a true freshman, he's making his first start on the road in the SEC. And you couldn't tell by looking at him. Olinsky threw 57 passes a week ago against Alabama. And threw for 324 yards. Three wide set on first down. Holinsky from his end zone. Rifles one incomplete. That shows you the confidence they have in Holinsky to be backed up like that. And he's going to just throw the ball on the first play of the game out of his own end zone. Uh, he was a little bit short on that one. And there was some question and some talk about his arm. And as far as in warmups, he looked just fine. So we'll keep an eye on that throughout the game. Intended for Edwards now second down and that time he and Edwards were not on the same page so two throws off the mark so far by the freshman Holinsky and that makes me think even more about his his right elbow and because I, I haven't seen him miss two throws in a row like that in, in the three there are two games that I've seen him play no very uncharacteristic and now third down and ten an empty backfield, a precarious spot for the freshman here. Missouri showing blitz. They bring it. Holinsky, Cox and fires. And a scooping catch at the 11 yard line. And that's Chavis Dawkins, the senior from Duncan, South Carolina. But it's going to be short of a first down. Eight yards on the pickup. 
Not the start Kalinski was envisioning for sure, but that throw looked a little better. And you got to be careful here. Rashad Floyd is back to receive the punt from Charlton. Floyd has three career punt returns for touchdowns. He went 71 last week. Mm -hmm. Great looking punt by Charlton. And Floyd has to angle back all the way to the 25. Momentum takes him to the 19. Looking for a seal block out of an ankle tackle. 30, 40, and down the sideline, wrapped up at midfield. Great return by Rashad Lloyd, the fifth year senior. No score here early in Missouri as we break down Kelly Bryant. The thing I like the most about him is his uh, ability to escape in the pocket. Watch him on this play. It's a muddied up view. Makes a man miss, steps up, keeps the vision down the field, and then flips it in for a little touchdown pass. He's outstanding in terms of running around. Now the vision that he has, he's scanning the whole field. I don't know how he saw this receiver who was hidden along the sideline and behind a corner. He still finds him, zips it out for a touchdown. Those are some of the skills Bryant brings to the table. Of course, he later torched West Virginia in a convincing victory for Mizzou after that heartbreaking week one loss to Wyoming. To pick up a guy like Kelly Bryant off the transfer portal, whatever you want to call it these days, it's so huge. If you think about it, everybody thought he was going to Auburn or Arkansas, and that was one of the things that Derek Dooley, offensive coordinator, told us. He said, yeah, I like that we were flying yes. under the radar. Yes, and, and that's what they did. He called it a, a business-type transaction. He said he really enjoys recruiting seniors. <laughs> <laughs> Better than 17-year-old kids, that's for sure. Little crossing route, caught, yards after catch. Will give Jonathan Johnson a first down, and that should put him over 2,000 career yards. Just the 11th player all time in Missouri history. The other 10, by the way, all made it to the NFL. Good sign. In plus territory on first down. To the ground game, gaping hole right side. Inside the 25, it's Tyler Beatty, the talented sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee. He's the more elusive of the two backs. Yeah, and and T.J. Bronson blitzed right into where Beatty was running, and they passed each other like two ships in the night. <laughs> Beatty is pretty shifty. On first down, Bryant going to tuck it and run. 20, 15, 10, still on his feet inside the five. And down to the three-yard line before Bukwamu makes the stop. A gain of 20 yards for Bryant. When the Tigers get down in this area of the field, Derek Dooley takes the shackles off of Bryant, and you will see him run the football a lot more, just like he did in that. This is normally Albert O territory. Look out for the big tight end. There he is, right near the left tackle. 20 career touchdowns for Albert O. Beatty the lone back on first and goal. Beatty stacked up, pushes the pile forward for about a yard. This Gamecock defense had a tough time against Alabama, but then again, who doesn't? Pretty difficult to cover that personnel no matter what they're running. Yeah, they ran up and down the field. Those receivers for Alabama, they made the Gamecock secondary look out of sorts, I guess would be a nice way to put it. And the thing that Will Muschamp was adamant with us about the missed tackles, that's what drove them crazy. That's what they have to clean up this week. On second down, Roundtree spinning and down inside the one-yard line, Larry Roundtree who has four straight games with a touchdown, trying to make it five there. The coach called, Coach Dooley called him a plotter, but he meant it as a, a compliment. Right. I, I took it that way myself. I've been referred to as a plotter yeah. in my days, and we're guys that just keep going, uh -huh. right? One step after another, punch it in. Well, let's see if he plots right here. He dots the eye. Albert O up top. Third and goal around. Up and not in. Great stop by that Gamecock interior. This is getting low and then coming up over the top. Great play by T.J. Brunson in his third year starting senior linebacker. Met him at the summit. Any question they're going to go for it here. The ball is inside the one. It's fourth down at about a foot. I would have Bryant keep it on this. 
Eighth play of the drive. Roundtree the deep back. Bryant swarmed under and sacked for a huge loss on the play. Great surge by that Gamecock defense. Annika Berry, the defensive lineman, was in the tackle, was able to slide inside untouched, and he was playing Bryant the entire way. Great play by Kingsley Enoch Bari and the Gamecocks stop Mizzou on fourth down. Great to be with you here in Como and Ray. Again, we can turn back to the quarterbacks. We know what we're getting from Kelly Bryant. We're still not sure what we're going to see from Ryan Holinsky. How much is that elbow bothering him at all versus just being a true freshman? Yeah, that's something that's going to have to play out. I mean, we had a mixed results there in that first drive. Two errant throws, one good one. Uh, first down, first carry of the game by Rico Dowdle, who was brilliant last week against Alabama. Ran for over 100 yards against the Crimson Tide. Tempo here. And a quick throw deflected. And down to the ground, incomplete. And Chris Turner, the junior defensive end, came off the edge untouched. And they, they don't expect him to be able to make that play, but he did a good job getting up and knocking it away. As Missouri defense comes in second in the nation in pass defense, some of that level of competition. Wyoming didn't need to throw it much. They gashed him on the ground. It's the so offense, we're still trying to figure three. out just how good. There were two forward passes thrown during the down. Second down. Trying to figure out just how good Missouri is on defense. And time will tell. As the coaching staff told us, this is by far and away the best offense that they have faced thus far. Yes. Not sure what's going on down here, Mike. They, they said there were two forward passes thrown. I, I didn't see the second one. That's our referee, James Carter. We're going to discuss this a little bit. Well, they should because it's either that or my eyes are deceiving me here early on. <laughs> Correction, the penalty is half the distance from the spot of the foul. Loss of down, third down. Let's take a look at it and see for ourselves. One forward pass. And then the ball hits the ground. Where's the second forward pass? Did Helensky bat it down and they're calling that a pass? I, 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 I the just, ruling on the field is that there were two forward passes during the down. The previous play is under review. I think we'd all like to take a review of this one and make sure what exactly happened on that last play. You see Cale Garrett involved. The, well, he there. wanted a touchdown. He was holding the ball in the end zone, raising his hands. And I wasn't sure what he was thinking. It looked like a basic batted ball to me. All right, there's the forward pass. Okay. Uh, he caught yep. it and then threw it right to the ground. And if he throws through that backwards, that very well could be a fumble and a touchdown. Although they wouldn't let you advance it unless Kale Garrett got it in the end zone. Yeah, he, that, that would look backwards to me. Uh, a freshman An mistake recovery. right there. That, that might be six points Missouri there. You want to just let that ball hit the ground, and really it would have. There was nobody that was threatening to pick that pass off. And you see that's defensive coordinator Ryan Walters raising his arm saying, hey, this should be a touchdown. I have to agree with him. It, it looked to me like that second throw was a lateral. Mm -hmm. And Missouri picked it up. Cale Garrett, intelligent senior linebacker, who Will Muschamp said he's been there forever <laughs> competing against Garrett. But I'd like to bring in Matt Austin, our ESPN rules analyst. Matt, what do you see on this play? Well, this one's extremely unusual because you obviously have the first forward pass. What the replay official needs to determine is did the did the quarterback catch the ball the second time or did he just simply bat it to the ground. 
Uh, if he would just bat it to the ground, you have nothing but an incomplete pass because he, he's eligible to touch the ball, so he can bat it in any direction. If they determine that he caught the ball, I agree with you. It looks like he threw it to the ground backwards. That would make it a backwards pass and a live ball recovered by Missouri. So the key point here is, Matt, is whether or not he had possession before he threw it to the ground. That's correct. If he possessed it, it's a backwards pass. If he didn't, it's simply a bat, and the play should be an incomplete pass. And again, the ruling on the field was not a fumble, so you, you have to have indisputable video evidence for them to overturn this. And I think we I think we just saw it. To me, that's indisputable. He caught it, threw it backwards. Garrett picked it up. This is going to be a touchdown for Missouri, at least if I was making the call. Now, and if so, it's a huge mistake by the freshman Ryan Holinski and a big break for the Missouri defense. After further review, the second pass by the South Carolina quarterback was backward. There was an immediate recovery in the end zone by Missouri. Touchdown. Wow. Well, as you heard, as you heard Matt Austin mention, that is an extremely bizarre and unusual play. I don't think I've ever seen it quite done like that. You've seen quarterbacks throw it, have it batted, then catch it, maybe run. But clearly what Ryan Holinsky was hoping to do is just bat it down straight into the ground and, and make the play dead. But by throwing it backwards, Missouri catches a huge break. Yeah, that's uh, one of the wildest, weirdest plays I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like that myself. But when you look at it on the replay, that there's no disputing that's what happened. And give Kale Garrett, the veteran linebacker, credit. Heads up play by him to pick it up and take it to the end zone. So Missouri, a defensive score. Opens up the scoring here in Como, 7 nothing Mizzou. Uh, it was bizarre, but Missouri will gladly take it. Cale Garrett, the senior, who has made so many big plays during his four years in a Tigers uniform. Alert play on him, and now Mizzou continues to just open up a can of the first quarter against opponents now outscoring their four opponents this year, 58 to nothing so far in the opening quarter. Oh, I might just when you think you've seen it all. I've never seen that. <laughs> Something like that popped up, but Cale Garrett knew immediately. I mean, he was right there on yeah. the spot, and that's why he picked it up and raised his arms. Good luck returning a kickoff against Tucker McCann. That's 22 of 23 kickoffs unreturned on the year. He's got one of the best legs in all of college football. It's pretty amazing because he punts, he kicks off, and he plays kicks for this football team. And basically manages his leg throughout the week so that he doesn't wear himself out. Last week he became the first player this century to punt it four times for 50 yards or more and kick three field goals of 40 yards or more. Speaking of something you'd ever see. We're looking at Ryan Holinsky again off to a shaky start this far. Let's see what Ryan can do on this drive. If he sticks to the way what we've seen out of him he'll, he'll just put that behind him and move forward. First down between the tackles Tavian Feaster who was actually a college teammate of the Missouri quarterback Kelly Bryant at Clemson six foot 220 pound senior who actually has been one of the toughest guys to bring down in the SEC 18 broken tackles he's drawn thus far and he does that out in space that's where he's at his best out on the edge it's hard to get your hands around Feaster the Wildcats shown here we were told we would see this to carry on Joyner keeps it Joyner who's lightning quick plows ahead to the 33 yard line setting up a third down and short we thought we would see him even if Ryan Holinsky was 100 percent all week long they wanted to get this young man some work he's a redshirt freshman out of North Charleston he's caught a couple of passes and he's thrown just two in his two years in a Gamecock uniform he's the antithesis of Ryan Holinsky in terms of a being a dual threat kind of almost run first guy now Holinsky back in at quarterback on third down and two. Out of the shotgun. Holinsky with time and air mails one over the head of Brian Edwards. And Ray, this is not the Ryan Holinsky we saw in the last two games. And he got, he got whacked pretty good. Gillespie on a blitz. You're going to see him come up right on the right side and bam, wax him in the back just as he lets it go. And you. See Holinsky grabbing the back of his leg. I don't know if there's something there. We'll have to wait to find out because that was fourth down. Gamecocks out to punt. Floyd back to receive. 
Another booming punt from Charlton. And a fair catch at the 24 yard line for Mizzou. 40 yard punt, no return. And another look now at that Missouri offense, which again has been scorching opponents in the first quarter. They've got weapons. I mean, when you look at it, Kelly Bryant was the final piece of the puzzle, of course, replacing Drew Locke, who's now in the NFL. They've got veteran rece receivers. They've got a first round tight end. They've got a bruising back, a scat back, and a veteran line. There's a lot to like there. Yeah, and it was kind of surprising they stumbled a little bit running the football out of the blocks up at Wyoming, but they ran into a bit of a buzzsaw. They've cranked it up the last two weeks. On first down, it's Roundtree probing the left side and falling forward for a yard. Enek Bari on another stop for that Gamecock defense. Two teams, of course, meet every year since Missouri entered the SEC in the Eastern Division. Gamecocks have won the last three. On uh, second down, Bryant lobbing one down the sideline and great coverage on the play by their top corner. That's J.C. Horn, the sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia. He was shadowing Jalen Knox. Yeah, it looked like Knox was wearing a white jersey for a half a second there. He was all over him, but I'm really impressed that Kelly Bryant put that in there where it was potentially catchable. Oh, another third down and long. Both teams changing up what they're going to do here. Blake locked down to five. Now two. Gets it off in time. Four-man rush, Bryant looking and trying to find Albert O, the All-American tight end, but that ball was underthrown. Great coverage by T.J. Brunson getting underneath and in the throwing lane where Bryant wasn't comfortable enough to stick it on his big tight end. Now the Gamecock defense again comes through, and Bryant Edwards out to receive the punt from Tucker McCann. A wobbler and a fair catch called for at the 33 by Brian Edwards. Ryan Holinski off to a rough start so far. Yeah, we were wondering how the arm would respond. That pass wasn't so bad, a little weak. Here's the second one he threw, and that's what you call errant right there. And then he takes a hit and air mails this one over his big receiver Edwards. And early on, I have to say, from my viewpoint, that elbow's bothering him a little bit. How much? I don't know, but it's not as accurate as he was prior to this ball game. He was so sharp in the last two games. This technically is his first career road start. A lot was made of that, but if, if you look good against Alabama, I don't care where on planet Earth you play, yeah, right. you're not going to be phased playing on the road. Holinsky keeps it, and Holinsky slides down at the 38 yard line to pick up a five for the freshman. Nice decision by Holinsky. I mean, that's. That's a tough one sometimes. A guy coming off the edge was coming right at him, but he felt he could get it on the edge, so he kept it. Moved the sticks about five yards. What, second and five here? Dowdle in the backfield on second down. And again, that throw wide of the mark. Intended for Brian Edwards, his top target. Will Muschamp now in his fourth year. For the first couple of years, really, they were ahead of schedule. He took over a, a total rebuild. And last year, they had a tough showing in the bowl game. This year, disappointing loss in week one to the Tar Heels. And this is one of those swing games that is going to help define the season, really, for both these teams. Yeah, they're all must wins, but this one is a must must win. Double muster. On third and five. Alinsky with all kinds of time goes underneath, but that's not going to get it done. Brian Edwards, three yards shy of the marker. Great coverage down the field by the, the Tiger defense. There was nowhere else for Holinsky to throw that football, had to drop it down. Joe 
Joseph Charlton on the punt. Fifth year senior out of AC Florida High School back in Columbia, South Carolina. Booms this one. Fair catch called for at the 16 yard line. Kelly Bryant, it's been an interesting career. Kelly Bryant was a household name at Clemson. Things were going well, and then all of a sudden, there was a young man by the name of Lawrence that overtook him. See, 2017, he actually led the Tigers to a victory over the Gamecocks, the Clemson Tigers, that is, but then realized the writing was on the wall. He was not going to start anymore, winds up transferring. And as we mentioned, nobody was thinking Missouri. And that was completely off the radar, but he says he fell in love with the culture here at Mizzou. He knew he was going to be the man. They pretty much promised him the job, liked the offense, liked the weapons around him, and decided Missouri was the place for him. Bryant hands it off on first down. A little shake and bake move, but nowhere to run for Tyler Beatty. Nowhere to run, and he ran right into Javon Kinlaw. <laughs> That is absolutely nowhere to run. Yeah, Javon Kinlaw made a lot of money last week, and that loss to Alabama made some significant plays, and a lot of scouts believe he's going to be a first-round draft pick. Bryant weaving his way to the 19-yard line. It'll be another third down and long. Inside linebackers, Jones and Brunson combining for that tackle. We talked to Traveris Robinson, the defensive coordinator of South Carolina. He was really happy with the way Ernest Jones played last week, sophomore linebacker. Uh, he burned his red shirt to play in the bowl game last year. Had a chance to make, to go ahead and that would, would have been his fifth game. And he said, I want to play football. And I respect that. Out of the gun on third down. Bryant with time. Rifles one, and he's wide of the mark that time. Albert O had a step on the defender, but the throw is not there, and now Missouri forced to punt, but a penalty flag back near where Bryant threw that football. Behind the line of scrimmage, all the way back at the 11. Looked like they were holding Kinlaw to me. He's working on the guard, First left foul. guard, Chase Cook. Roughing the passer. Defense, number 52, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, that would be on Enoch Barry. That's a huge penalty. Gives him second life on this drive. Yeah, Kinlaw gets there first, but Enoch Barry keeps pushing and then finishes it off. I don't. What did he do? I, don't, I didn't see it. It didn't. It must have hit him as he went by. It, it didn't look like much from that angle. That's a killer penalty. 15 yards. Missouri will gladly take it. And a fresh set of downs. Four minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Bryant in the pocket, another penalty flag. This will likely be a hold, and Bryant is sacked. That's 15, Aaron Sterling, the junior out of Atlanta. Let's see what that flag's all about. But the front four for South Carolina is real good at getting upfield, putting pressure on quarterbacks. They'll force people to hold them, which I think is what we're going to have here. Obviously be declined with the sack. Personal foul, face mask, offense number 50. That penalty is declined. Second down. It's on Hiron White, the right tackle. Let's go back to that roughing the passer penalty. Yeah, here's 52, Inigbare, and that he's the one they call it on. So, yeah, I guess he touched him in the head. So that's a love tap. Yeah, I, I don't like to see that kind of call. That's, that's not hurting anybody. Rules are rules, though, right? Can't touch him, can't hit him in the head, but it's got to be a forcible blow. That was not a forcible blow. Second and 15, almost a circus catch by Jonathan Johnson, but he can't reel it in. It'll be third and long. We thought we might see a, a higher scoring game, but that's not the indication thus far. Both these defenses have been rather salty in the first quarter. Missouri defense really has improved since week one. They, they, ran, they ran into trouble up in Wyoming and they turned it around in a hurry. On third and long, Missouri plays it conservative and there's a fumble. Ball down at the 25 and scooped up by the Gamecocks. Kinlaw got it. Big old Javon Kinlaw, 310 pounds, pounced on it. 
Bet he took the air right out of it too. <laughs> but a big play by this Carolina defense. Looked like yeah, that was Aaron Sterling who ripped the ball out from his knees, and then Big Kenlaw came over and pounced on it. Well, a break for the Gamecocks on the turnover. Great field position, best of the day for Carolina. And it's going to be Joyner at quarterback on first down, working out of the shotgun. A little pistol bone here. Fakes the handoff, trying to get to the edge, and it's strung out well by Missouri. Joshua Bledsoe, the safety on the stop, a loss of three. And Missouri was playing run all the way in that formation, so they had the safeties up in position to make a play, and Bledsoe did just that. Joyner going to stay in at quarterback. Again with that pistol look. And he's only thrown two career passes. He tried to throw a third, but is sacked at the 35-yard line. Gillespie, the safety, coming in, making another play as they bring him in on the blitz. Look at him at the top of your screen. He comes in there, and nobody blocks him. He reacts quickly, gets on uh, the, the quarterback, Joyner, and Joyner does a smart thing by not throwing that football and just tucking it down. Staff told us Tyree Gillespie is the fastest player on the team, even at 215 pounds. He got in there quick. Well, now that backs him up. It's a third and 19. Alinsky back in at quarterback. Play action. Olinsky going to uncork a deep ball. Has a man in the end zone. Juggling catch, but out of bounds. Edwards hauled it in, but could not get a foot in bounds. Olinsky threw that almost 50 yards in the air, so he answered a few questions with that deep throw. Oh, great play again by Gillespie. The, just getting his hand in between the hands of Edwards and tipping that thing up. The long for Parker White, a 48-yarder against Alabama. This will be from 50. Kick on the way, and that does not have a chance. But wide right. 50-yarder wide right by Parker White, just his second miss of the year. Coming up at 7.30 Eastern time over on the SEC Network, it's college football action continuing as San Jose State takes on the Arkansas Razorbacks in the SEC Saturday night matchup. Looks like the Razorbacks have found their quarterback. Trying to find some more victories under Chad Morris. I think Chad Morris is going to get that offense rolling there. Taking a little longer than he'd hoped, but he'll do it. Missouri taking over after the missed field goal. Bryant on the scramble. Bryant brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Aaron Sterling again. Well, Sterling's having a whale of a game so far. Forced fumble, got a sack, now makes a tackle for a loss. Somebody want, might want to try to block him. Got D line getting some good pressure here in this first quarter. Four wide look on second down. Trying to get to the edge as Roundtree penalty flag falls as Roundtree is dropped for a loss. Brunson came up and filled the hole like a man. That was a great linebacker play. TJ Brunson leading tack where the last two years for the Gamecocks. Holding offense number 75. That penalty it's time. Third down. That's on the right guard, Trevor Wallace Sims. We asked the coaching staff and Coach Odom about all the penalties that Missouri's had. And he's kind of shrugged it off, saying, ah, well, "We're okay." Yeah, I was I was taken aback. That was the most bizarre answer I think I've ever got regarding penalties. And they they've hurt Missouri here early on in the year. That one, fortunately for them, declined, but put them in a the third and long. 
Five in the pattern on third and 12 and a leaping catch by Jonathan Nance. The senior goes top floor and picks up a first down, a gain of 22. Kelly Bryant finds it again. And you see him, he's eyeballing it over there, makes a really nice throw, and then it's all for the receiver of Nance getting a foot down while taking a hit. Mizzou back into plus territory. Fake it to Roundtree. Bryant keeps it. And nowhere to go. Bryant with tiptoe out of bounds. That's an executive decision right there. No need to take a hit of the senior quarterback. He'll pick up a yard. Yeah, he saw Jemias Williams right there in his grill. He said, I'll just live to fight another day. This is the area of the field where they'll open it up a little bit more, but we're going to call this the end of the first quarter here. So how about That's that? The end of the first Two quarter. teams we thought could put up a lot of points today. We saw one touchdown. It was on the defensive side for Missouri. Mizzou up by seven as we get ready for quarter number two here in Como. With Ray Bentley and Tara Talmich, Mike Morgan here in Columbia, Missouri. It's the Tigers leading the Gamecocks seven to nothing on a defensive touchdown by senior linebacker Kale Garrett. Not a whole lot of offense for either side in the opening quarter under 100 yards combined. Bryant on second down, missiles one wide of his intended target, Jonathan Johnson. Well, we, you mentioned it earlier, Mike. We expected maybe some offense out of the, both of these football teams. After one quarter, we didn't get a whole lot. No. South Carolina with nine total yards in Missouri. They, were, they got 78 yards, but it took them 24 plays to do so. Not matriculating down the field this afternoon yet, anyway. It was a thrilling game last year. It came down to virtually the final play. Gamecocks won it. Their third in a row in Missouri. Bryant going to tuck it and run. A design draw, and he finds daylight and finds the first down. That is something Kelly Bryant does so well. And that one you could tell a design all the way. Yeah, they pulled the backside guard and the and the tight end that's off the ball to lead the way. Uh, do it again. Uh, first down, round tree. Lowers the shoulder and staggers forward to the 30-yard line. Larry Roundtree of Junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. North Carolina schools, South Carolina schools didn't really give him much of an offer. Well, he wound up here in Mizzou, and he's turned out to be one of the best backs they've had. Bryant harassed, throws it away, and another penalty flag. Tried to fool him on some play action, but uh, South Carolina secondary didn't bite. Had to throw it away. We look forward to the call. Holding. Offense number 75. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. Yeah, that's a number of holding penalties already on that Mizzou offensive line, and they've had all they can handle from that Gamecock front. Wallace Sims guilty again. Uh, the last one they got him on that was declined. This one they move him back. So they'll go empty. They like this guy the matchup that he'll get. That's Alberto. They haven't hit him yet. Second down, Bryant racing forward inside the 30 and down to the 29-yard line. And Kelly Bryant came in to this game 24 carries and just 26 yards, but you see he is capable of being a very adept runner in this offense. Yeah, and he saw the defense. It was man. There was no one underneath in the middle, so I think he just decided I'm going to, if there's a little bit of a hole, I'm going up there and taking it, and that's exactly what he did. Mizzou one for five on third down. This is third and three. Bryant looks to pass all kinds of time. Bryant can file his taxes and finally throws incomplete. I mean, he had all day to survey, but give the Gamecocks secondary credit. Nobody was open. And they, they only rushed two guys again. They play that soft middle 
trying to spy, and, and if Bryant scrambles, they want to make a play, but Bryant just missed his man there. That, that's just simply uh, a bad throw by the quarterback. Now McCann, and you know he's got the leg. He's got a long of 52. That came last week. This one will be from 47 yards out. Kick on the way. Has the distance, and it is true. 47 yard boot by the senior Tucker McCann. 13 22 to play first half. It's Mizzou 10 and Carolina nothing. All right, thank you much. My concern for Kentucky going into that game, hangover effect, devastating loss last week to Florida, a game they seemingly had in hand, and off to a rough start in Cowbell country. 10-0 our score here, Mizzou on top, and another unreturnable kick from Tucker McCann. We'll see if this Gamecock offense can get it going on a rough start. But the freshman Ryan Holinsky just three of eight for one passing yard. The lone touchdown in this game came on a fumble by Holinsky in an unorthodox play. But they have just not gotten much going in either department, Ray Bedley. Yeah, and I'm going to give a lot of credit to each defense. They've been playing extremely well, getting pressure on each other's quarterback, and uh, the run game has been pretty much non existent for both teams. That touchdown for Mizzou. Came by Kale Garrett, the senior linebacker. Cox will try a sweep action by the receiver Brian Edwards for a couple. And they try to invent ways to get the ball into Edwards' hands, and rightly so. I think he's the most explosive guy they have on that offense. And so far, Missouri's done a nice job of shutting him down, too. Well, we haven't seen Ray last week. Hancock tight ends caught nine passes. I haven't seen a ball thrown to the tight end yet. Firing through the hole and a first down for Rico Dowdle. Dowdle's been plagued by injuries and fumbles his first few years in a Gamecock uniform, but he has put it together in this his senior campaign. That's one of the first times they've run straight ahead at this defense rather than trying to get an edge. There might be something there. 11 yard pickup for Dowdle. Edwards in motion. Dowdle again. Burrowing for about a yard. Kale Garrett is so valuable to this Tiger defense. And they'll move him around. They put him on the edge on this one. And he's a basically an outside linebacker blitzing down to the inside. But he's able to redirect as well as anybody he slid down in there and made that tackle Been such a productive player in his time at Mizzou and he's really helped teach some of the other younger players like his linebacker mate Nick Bolton number 32 is going to be a good one and Bolton's come a long way after week one Dowdle with blockers ahead but a great open field tackle there he is there he is again Nick Bolton the sophomore from Frisco, Texas. He's one of five starters on this Missouri defense that hail from the Lone Star State. They've been big in recruiting Texas. Well, they got a good one right there. SEC Player of the Week. Had a pair of interceptions. And he's improved. You know, I watched him week one against Wyoming, and he was a little bit lost but came on as the game went on. And then the week two against West Virginia, he was dominant and same last week. Gamecocks 0 for 4 on third down. Olinsky out of the gun. Play clock under five. Not going to get it Not off. Not going to get it off. They'll call a timeout. You can read lips. Let's go. First tar timeout of the half. South Carolina. And we will take it with them as we step aside. Missouri 10. Carolina nothing. Let's go. Ray Bentley. Tara Talmadge on the sideline. It's a Missouri 10 0 lead. The one touchdown coming defensively for Kale Garrett of Mizzou. Ryan Olinsky, talented freshman, has struggled here so far. This Gamecock offense has sputtered 0 for 4 on third down and facing a third and nine here. See if Missouri brings pressure. They, they like to do so in these type of downs. 
key to that will be Cale Garrett. He's lined up in one of the A gaps right up in here. Drops out. Alinsky, clean pocket and throws again just off target. Intended for Shy Smith, a junior from Union, South Carolina. And they, they showed the pressure, backed out of it. That throw was a little bit off. Had it been out in front, I believe that they'd have had a chance. Smith yep. would have had a chance at it. Not executing on offense on either side. Charlton on the punt. The dangerous Floyd back to receive. And he will signal for the fair catch at the seven yard line. Again, the Gamecocks have won three in a row in this series. None more entertaining than last year's finale. The Tigers taking a 35-34 lead on Tucker McCann's career-long 57-yard field goal. But then the Gamecocks march down the field with precious seconds on the clock, making it all the way to the Missouri 16-yard line. And that's when Parker White nailed this field goal in the waning seconds for a Gamecock victory, 37-35. That is a memory that Kelly Bryant wasn't here for, but everybody else in a Missouri uniform just about was, and it's left a bitter taste in the mouth of this Missouri program, including Barry Odom, who was quick to point out the last three years when they've lost these games to the Gamecocks, turnover margin minus seven combined. Hard to win when you do that. Bryant throws high, but a nice job of reeling it in by Jalen Knox, the talented sophomore. I like their wide receivers. I do too. Knox is a guy that can take the top off of a defense and saw that his athleticism going up and get the ball. We've seen Johnson make some underneath catches and run with it. And then they have Jonathan, Jonathan Nance, the transfer from Arkansas, who has contributed. This is Bryant on second and short. And he will tap dance his way to the first down at the 22 yard line. Gain of five. See if they go some tempo here after getting that first down. Hand off to Beatty. Trying to find daylight off right tackle. There's nothing there. Beatty devoured near the line of scrimmage. That's Aaron Sterling along with some help from Ernest Jones again making a defensive play. And I, I had some questions about this defense, mostly the back end after watching last week's game against Alabama, but I think you have questions about any defense that plays, any back end that plays against Alabama. No question. But the front seven was pretty solid. Bryant with time, missiles one, and that's behind the intended target. And that's Dominic Jacinto, the sophomore. Now, Kelly Bryant hasn't exactly been sharp either with his throws. No, this one's, just, as you said, just a little off. He's got all day to throw it, and then he's, he's going to be mad at himself when he watches the tape on that one because that's about as easy as it gets. That could have been some big yards after the catch as well if you hit him in stride. A third down and nine. Missouri two for seven on third down. Gamecocks dialing up a blitz. Bryant little dump pass and it's picked off at the 20. Down the sideline and a touchdown for DJ Wanham, the senior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. And Wanham was not where Kelly Bryant expected him because they brought a five-man pressure with some loops and twists. So Wanham starts inside, ends up outside, and it showed up out of nowhere, and Bryant hit him right on the eight the chest and it goes the other way for six and they might have marked it out of bounds inside the, on the one field is an interception by the defense at the return the return team was knocked out of bounds at the one yard line will be first down one yard line and oh he lost that ball he <laughs> lost the ball so just shy of the goal line but a huge break as Carolina finally gets the ball in the red zone here they'll have it at about the one foot line that might be the biggest hit of the game so far. <laughs> Delivered by Kelly Bryant. That yes. was a whack right there. It's like a little frustration out on I the play. I think so. But Bryant did not expect Wanham to be there. I mean, he was he was lined up initially on the opposite side and looped around and showed up out of nowhere. Now 
Best scoring opportunity of the half by far for the Gamecocks. Not sure why they're holding play up here. No, I think they're taking another look at it just well, to make sure. Well, if, if Wanham fumbled the ball through the end zone, that's going to be a touchback. But it looked clearly to me he was out of bounds. So watch the flight of the ball. Yeah, that's out of bounds. Dowdle banging bodies. Touchdown. Rico Dowdle with his third rushing touchdown of the year, and the Gamecocks are finally on the board. Thanks to their defense. Both defenses have really led the scoring charge here this afternoon. We, we basically have had two defenses account for the two touchdowns in this game. That's a nice inside run by Dowdle, though. He got hit pretty hard, but he had the momentum and the wherewithal to get that ball across the goal line. Got to love those one-yard drives that take six seconds. They, in fantasy football, they call those touchdown vultures. <laughs> Here it is again. They pull the front side guard, Javon Gwynn. There's just defenders in the hole. But it's a power run by Dowdle to get it in there. Looks like it'll hold up on replay. Parker White on for the extra point. And with 9.35 to go, it's a three-point game. Well, it all started on defense here. Bryant did not see the big man, Hunnam, and he heads to the end zone. Doesn't quite get there, but they'll cap it off with a Dowdle score. on the gridiron and look ahead to the hottest topics for the coming week. Mike working with Ray Bentley, Tara Talmadge on the sideline. Mike, if I thought out loud, I'd be in trouble. Oh, I know it. <laughs> I've already heard some of your thoughts. Kick off into the end zone. Mizzou will take over at the 25 as we say hello to Tara. Yeah, guys, that interception right there by DJ Wanham and the touchdown by Rico Dowdle was exactly what this South Carolina team needed. They are very re-energized over here, and defensive line coach John Scott Jr. went over to his guys and said, just keep winning the line of scrimmage. I'd say so far they've done a pretty good job of that, Ray Bentley. They've yeah. drawn a number of holding penalties. They've gotten some good surge from that front three, front four. And they've controlled the running game as well, and a lot of it's coming up front. Aaron Sterling's been outstanding today. Saw Javon Kinlaw pounce on a fumble as well. Bryant, a little dump down pass to the 25, daylight ahead by Beatty, and Beatty tight roping the sideline, finally goes down at the 45 yard line. Nifty move by the sophomore out of Memphis, Tennessee. And Beatty, that's his game. Get him on the edge. Receiver type, and he will make people miss and look foolish in space, and he'll run you over if you ain't careful. Derek Dooley says, Beatty's got juice. I like that. <laughs> yeah. What a great pickup that has been for this coaching staff. Derek Dooley to the ground on first down, and again, the Gamecocks doing a good job. Ernest Jones, one of the men in on the stop. As well as Kobe Smith. Daniel Fennell that got in there as well. And that for us to call three guys on a tackle, you know what? <laughs> they're, they're hunting the football. Yeah, they've been swarming. Yeah, it's a defense that had high expectations coming in. Of course, Will Muschamp's reputation as an elite defensive coordinator before getting head coaching opportunities. Second down, nothing there. Sherrod Green, who had a pick six against Missouri last year with the tackle from behind. Yeah, that's great timing from Green. He blitzed off the edge, but the play ran the other way. He just tracked it down and made the tackle. That's pretty good. All right, third down and seven. Mizzou two of eight on third down so far. Bryant throws that one a little bit low. Johnson can't make the low grab, and Missouri will have to punt. And both Johnson and Kelly Bryant are mad at themselves, shaking their heads, because 
They didn't hook up and on a wide open situation. It was a catchable ball, but not the most catchable ball. So you, you, you put it on both of them and they both know it was each of their faults. I think that's a good analysis catchable, but Kelly Bryant has really been off on a number of throws so far today, even when he's had time. No fair catch called for, but diving on the return is Brian Edwards. A 48 yard punt. Nothing on the return, and now another look at this Gamecock offense. It's going to be a little bit more difficult than the last drive. One play, one yard, as they'll start set up shop at the seven. Maybe that touchdown drive will get them juiced up. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's the most success they've had all day on offense. I think it tied a record for the shortest and quickest drive in football history. One play, one yard. Now we'll see if they can move the ball downfield, backed up inside their own 10. Faced for the lone back. For Holinsky. Holinsky. Going to lob one. And again, just off the mark. And that's intended for Edwards, who's got to step on his man. Ryan Halinski's just not been sharp today. Yeah, well, that play was discombobulated from the start. Halinski holds the ball out one way, and the back goes the other. And I don't know who you're faking on that thing. And then the pressure comes as he tries to get rid of it and overthrows the ball. That one was botched from the get-go. Baster stays in on second down. Look at yards per play, 1.2. That's about what they'll get on this run. Feaster stuffed up the middle. Jordan Elliott, big number one. That's a guy you're going to see on Sundays. He's their best pass rusher, and he goes 6'4", 315. Yeah, he had a big hit sack early in their game last week, and it got this defense fired up. He's a juice guy as well. Hancock's in search of their first third down conversion, 0 for 5. Holinski throwing off his back foot and it's knocked away. That's a dangerous throw intended for Shai Smith, but covered extremely well. Joshua Bledsoe, talented free safety out of Houston. Tiger defense brought the house. Holinski had to get rid of that thing, especially under duress in your own end zone. You got to get it out of there. He was able to get it out and then throw it accurately. I was impressed by that, but Bledsoe just showed up on time to make a play. John Floyd back to receive the punt from Charleston. Joseph Charlton has been busy in this first half. Missouri blocked a punt last year in this matchup, but don't go for it here. Floyd from the 31. Weaving. Finally pummeled at the 43 yard line. 60 yard punt. Missouri on top by a field goal. Sorry, Chris, we're going to go with good D, okay? That's that's going to be our assessment here. Positive spin. Always got to always got to spin it positive here. And all seriousness, that man has done a good job. Travaris Robinson with his defense so far today. Not ready today. They got called out last week. A lot of broken tackles, bad angles. Again, Alabama will do that to a lot of folks, but there were clearly some things that had to be cleaned up. Will Muschamp told us point blank as a former safety, I'm embarrassed the way our safeties have been playing. So they really wanted to make sure some of those bad plays in the secondary got cleaned up. So far, so good today. On second down, Bryant going to tuck it and run. Bryant with daylight, and Bryant down to the 30-yard line. That's that same play they ran effectively earlier where they pull the backside guard and they bring a tight end through as well. Bryant makes the fake and then gets up in behind it, and there's a big seat. You see those guys pulling over there to actually tackle and guard pull. Even a little slide on the on the end, and then let's break dance. You do that head spin stuff, don't you, Mark? Uh, windmill <laughs> back spin. Yeah. Inch one, sure. 22 yards on the pickup. 
A straight ahead running on first down by Larry Roundtree. Nothing flashy about Larry Roundtree. He just takes what's there. Strong runner, solid. Four straight games with a touchdown this season. A little razzle-dazzle here into the hands of Johnson. Johnson has a crease, and Johnson will take it inside the 15. Well, Derek Dooley opening up the offense a little bit on this drive, a pickup of 14. How about Kelly Bryant? He tackles hard, and now he gets a block, keeps a man from getting to his runner on the outside, and this offense seems to have heated up a little bit. The run game doing it for him, man, a few tricks. Best-looking drive of the day for Mizzou. First down from the 14. Handoff. Great stick there. Roundtree goes down after two or three tough yards. Kobe Smith is a man who had that great stick, stepped up in the hole, and that was the end of it. Albert O country right here. That really is. He's been quiet so far today. Bryant keeps. Bryant gets to the edge and fights for an extra couple of yards down to the three yard line. And they used Albert O in a way that uh, we're not accustomed to. He was the lead blocker yeah. on that thing and he cleared it out pretty good. 20 career touchdown receptions for that man, number 81. See him on the right side of the formation. Bryant rifles one wide open at the five, and there he is. Albert O, career score number 21. Somebody's going to get chewed out on the sideline because this is a guy they talked about double teaming in the red zone. And nobody sees him. He just whips it out to the outside. No coverage at all anywhere. Everyone else was locked up, but they let the number one guy slide to the edge. This was the only pass on the drive. Had a little traffic there on that side of the ball. And Albert O found himself wide open. I'm sure it wasn't intentional. <laughs> A rub, not a pick, is that right, what they right, say? Yeah, that's what they say. The extra point is good, and Missouri responds to the Gamecock touchdown. Now that Seven was a play drive. Mike, that was a drive we kind of expected to see. Thought we'd see more of this from both teams. They finally cranked it up and got it going, and, and what I think got it going was they, they went physical, and they ran the football the first three, four snaps in that drive. Mm -hmm. and that's what you call imposing your will. And that we hadn't seen other than from the defenses. Four minutes, six seconds remaining. And you see Missouri, this was really their most impressive drive of the game. Yeah, they get up behind the, the big guys on the offensive line, pulling them around from one side to the other. And then they get the reverse. Kelly Bryant gets a block, gets him down into that red zone area, the scoring zone. And then Albert O does what he does. Catch touchdown. Albert O has played in all four games. He has scored a touchdown in all four games so far this year for Mizzou. And if you're a return man against yeah. Tucker McCann, Day off, huh? it, you might as well just take a little cat nap at the goal line because you're not going to be able to return one. Well, Barry Odom tried to tell us he thought they were going to try to bring it out as there's a little scrum going on in the middle of the field here. But I, I was a little skeptical and dubious when he said that, but that's how you have to approach it. Right. You, that's what I'm sure he was selling to his kickoff coverage team all week. Oh, they're going to bring it out. They're going to bring it out. <laughs> no, no, they're not, Coach. Every that's kickoff but one has been a touchback so far against Missouri. Let's see what the Gamecocks can do in response. They need a counter punch now. It is Ryan Holinsky back out at quarterback. We've seen both Holinsky and Joyner thus far. From the 25. Handoff, inside run. 
And surging ahead. Gobbling up six tough yards is Tavian Feaster, the former Clemson Tiger. That was a good push up front by the offensive line. Maybe Carolina's going to take a page out of that Missouri book and try to get physical. To the air on second down. And all these throws outside the hash have just been off target thus far for Ryan Olitsky. There was a talk that he didn't practice much this week, was limited, and young guys need to continue to work and throw with their receivers to maintain their consistency. That's a great point. That would be less detrimental if we're talking about a, a junior or a senior. We're talking about a true freshman. Key play here on third down, and another one intended for Brian Edwards. Edwards had no chance. And you can see the frustration from Olenski. He just yelled at the gods, I believe. That was another, another miss where he had his guy open. Those must chance a little frustrated by the whole thing as well. I mean, if you're Will Muschamp and your offensive coordinator Brian McClendon, you're starting to wonder how much of the playbook can you run? This is another great punt by Charlton inside the 10. A 60 yard punt with no return. Saturdays in the South, our eight part documentary that chronicles the history of SEC football. If you folks haven't seen this, DVR, it. it's outstanding. It Tuesday at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, it's going to be part four, a 1970s look at Paul Bear Bryant's recommitment to the wishbone at Bama, plus the role that sports played on TV. Led by the voice of college football, Ray Bentley. Yeah. yeah. Also known as Keith Jackson. <laughs> I think I was 10 years old in the 70s, but <laughs> you I had a dream. There you go. It all starts with a dream. No, that's, that's really good stuff that they've put together this year on the SEC Network. I've had a chance to watch the first three parts. Can't wait for the final five. 3.23 to go. Missouri up by 10. Bryant hands it off. This is Beatty. Right back to that pull in the backside guard and tackle on a little counter OT look. And obviously South Carolina made a little adjustment to shore that up on that side. Bryant on second down, hands off. A little misdirection play by Beatty trying to find space to the near side. It'll set up a third down and manageable. That was a variation of a bare front by South Carolina. Haven't seen that yet, but it worked out well for him. And that's one thing you'll do when the team's running the ball against you. You shore it up, you cover the nose, and then you cover both uh, guards on the outside. You bring safety up into a linebacker spot, and you just add more people to the box, and it was effective. And they're in a uh, variation of it again. Gamecocks rushing four. Bryant settles in the pocket, and that one is caught. Jonathan Johnson, they've been trying to get on the same page. That time they do. Protection is really the key to this play is Bryant once again. He hasn't been harassed much today. He had all day and he finally was able to convert and execute with a clean pocket. 13 yards on this pickup. Bryant with time again. Surveys and completes. That's the other tight end who's rumbling and stumbling. Daniel Parker down to midfield. I know Ray Bentley. Everybody loves Albert O. You love this kid. Yeah, I love how physical he is. Here he is in the slot, and he's just going to run a little hitch route. There's no good coverage on him because they don't respect him really as a pass catcher. But they will respect him as a guy that will run you over. 6'4", 260. Bryant now is settling into a very clean pocket on each throw. All kinds of time. Beatty on that grab. First start time out of the half, Missouri, 30 seconds. Missouri now working to manage this clock a little bit. Two timeouts left, buck 22 to go. 
Don't forget, coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Mizzou Marching Band on SEC Network Plus. It's Marching Mizzou. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Mike Morgan, Ray Bentley, Tara Talmadge here at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. Mizzou looking for its first conference win of the year. So too are the Gamecocks trying to avoid a one and three start. This was one of those swing games for both these teams. Circled on the schedule very early. It has been a defensive affair so far in this first half. We've had a defensive score for Missouri, a defensive play that set up a one yard run for the Gamecocks. Just you see how skewed the total yardage is right now. Missouri starting to move the football here later in this second quarter, but it has not happened yet for the Carolina. Four in the pattern on second down, and Bryant just airmails that one. Yeah, that's because J.C. Horn was in the throwing lane, and had he not airmailed it, it would have been batted right back into his mm -hmm. face. Good job by Horn and coming on the proper angle and then timing his jump. J.C. Horn, who had an all SEC freshman year last season. Great future for that young man. Third down and nine for Mizzou, a minute 19 to go. Chess match going on. Ryan lasers one complete, but that'll be well shy of the mark. That's Albert O on the reception. They needed the 41. That's to the 44, and the question is, do you go for it here? Well, that's a tough call for me. I, I think you do, though. You got a little momentum. You're executing well on offense, and uh, South Carolina has not moved the ball at all. So uh, gamble on your defense and take a chance here. Could just try to draw them off sides, too, but not from the gun. That's hard to do. You have to be under center. Precious seconds ticking down. They don't seem to be in much of a hurry to snap this one. Yeah, they might just bail at the end here. Looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. It'll take it all the way down to 31 seconds before they burn the timeout. And they'll likely punt it away here. Second start, timeout of the half. Missouri, 30 seconds. You know, if, if, if the game cuts offense is humming, they might call a timeout there. Right. And, and, and but, but the way they've been struggling on offense, I don't blame the coaching staff for just letting it go down. You need to regroup, hit the reset button at halftime. Yeah, get, get into that locker room, brand new beautiful locker room, by the way, and, and circle your wagons because things are not going too well on offense for Carolina. Nice locker rooms and a nice new end zone addition to this stadium. We got a chance to chat with the coaches yesterday there. $98 million, that's what it buys you. It's beautiful. It is. Looks good there. It looks even better when you're inside. They've been in there for about a month now, and we talked to Coach Odom about it, and he said it, all, the, all the reviews are high praise. It's beautiful in there. All the bells and whistles, everything that you would want, and then some. Tucker McCann on the punt. Nobody out there deep for the Gamecocks. They're just going to let this one bounce. Or, or not. Or not. We're just be <laughs> caught. Why not? Inside the 10. And my guess would be we're going to see Carolina take one knee and we'll have ourselves a 17 7 halftime score. You don't think they'll run that plate to Lane did the other night? Uh, <laughs> the, the fake kneel down. Boy, what an exciting ending to that Unbelievable. game. Unbelievable. If you're Houston, that's going to sting for the rest of the um, year. That's college football, baby. I love it. It's never over. Alinsky from the gun is actually looking to throw. Hmm. And just floats one out of bounds. A little surprised with that call. Yeah, that's as curious a call as I've seen all day. I mean, you make a mistake here, and it is one heck of a gut punch before halftime. Yeah, I, I can't even think of a good reason to do that. Build his confidence? Uh, no, not really. Um, I don't know what they're trying to do. But they're going to take that name out of it. Uh, yes. And that should put an end 
to half number one. Defense dominating really on both sides. And Missouri with the better of it on the offensive side, taking a 10 point lead to halftime. Not what we expected, but very entertaining. There were some great plays on defense. Yeah. I think offenses, when they get in there at halftime, they'll be able to make adjustments, and we'll see a little matriculation in the second mm -hmm. half. Hoping to hear from Missouri head coach Barry Odom as he makes his way near Tara Talmadge on the sideline. South Carolina one first down in that first half, 30 yards of offense. So you know Barry Odom if he's happy about one. Defense dominating half number one here in Como, Missouri, leading the South Carolina Gamecocks 17-7, our halftime score. As we welcome you back inside the booth, he is former linebacker Ray Bentley. I am Mike Morgan. Ray, we talked about these quarterbacks at the top. We got the true freshman. We got the senior transfer. Both guys very effective so far this season, but really it was Kelly Bryant stealing the show in half number one. Yeah, he was definitely better. Holinsky didn't play very well at all, but Bryant was effective in terms of not only running the football, but he's, he picked it up making some throws later on, and they got that offense in gear just a little bit. We talked about Ryan Holinsky, questions about his health a little bit, did not throw the way he normally does in practice this week. He looked a little bit rough. How does he sure things up in the second half? Well, I don't know. It's very concerning because he was not accurate, as you said, and if it's an arm problem, there ain't much you can do until he gets healthy. Now, if it's a mental thing, he can come around, and maybe he will. We'll have to see what happens here in the second half. You know one thing that won't happen, that's a return on a kickoff for the Gamecocks. As Tucker McCann sends it into the end zone, and we say hello to Tara. Well, I spoke with Will Muschamps coming out of the half and asked him about Ryan Holinsky and how impressed he's been with what he's done so far. All he really said is they've got to help him out. They've got to run the ball more. They can't keep dropping the ball. And as for the offense to really get going, it's simple. They've got to get the ball downfield. Now, they certainly struggled to do that in half number one. They only took one deep shot the whole half, Mike. That, that's something that I think what coach is talking about, at least loosen this defense up a little bit. And they're going to start off empty. Five wide set on first down, complete at the 20. 25 30. Whole lot of daylight ahead. Past midfield. Into plus territory. 30. Edwards inside the 20. Edwards diving for the pylon, and he's knocked out of bounds at the one yard line, a gain of 74. Well, you wanted some offense, boom, there it is. And this is just a little slip screen back to the inside, and, and it's all about Edwards and his accelerator, man. He just hit the gas pedal and weaved his way through the field, and then at the end, he stepped out of bounds before he got the ball inside the pylon. They're going to look at it, though. It almost looked to me like he stepped out at the four, not the, the half yard line. Ruling on the field that the runner was short of the goal line. The previous play is on the further review. He gets the ball inside the pylon, but it looks like he's this is holding there, too. But watch this foot right here. Nope, that's in. That's a touchdown, people. He did not go out of bounds, in my opinion. He gets the ball inside the pylon before touching out of bounds. At six. Went airborne at the four. This is that's the foot I thought stepped yep. out, but it did not. And what a play by Edwards. He timed that out. He saw where he was at and he he kind of got his his feet like right like he was doing a triple jump or something oh, yeah, at that I mean, end. Think about that. He, he takes off 12 feet from the goal line, contorts his body as he's getting hit, changes hands to the right. And I'm with you. Hits the pylon. Yeah. If you hit the pylon, that's that's a that's inbounds. So that's a touchdown. What a play and what a way to start off the second half if you're Carolina. After review, the runner touched the pylon with the ball before going out of bounds, resulting in a touchdown. Right on, partner. Game clock operator, please reset the game Edwards clock to 14 And Brian Edwards has his third 49. receiving touchdown of the year. The He's clock. their big play guy. And what a big play that was on a simple screen. Edwards does the rest. Thank you. That was an explosive play. And, you know, they 
they tried to get the ball to him, and this is the first time they were able to really do it where he had some space. And boy, he made it happen. The Gamecocks had 30 yards of offense the entire first half. They had 75 on that play. Over doubled it. Parker White sneaks it inside the upright, and it's back to a three-point game. 11 seconds off the clock on a 75-yard touchdown from Holinsky to Edwards. He did a nice job looking off to his left, took a shot, but delivered it on time, and then it's all about Edwards, and he got, he got a couple good blocks, too. They could have called holding here, as you see the receiver, number 83, just latch on to the defender. That's uh, Chavis Dawkins, but he got away with it. Here you go. But there are several good blocks throughout this play. You know, Edwards is a guy who tested the NFL waters last year, did not get the kind of grade he was looking for, came back for his senior year. He has the size. He's not a blazer, but he's fast enough. Certainly you could expect him to have a chance to play on Sundays. I, I, I would put that on my uh, sizzle reel yeah, that's for the sizzle. NFL. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Well, that quiets the crowd here for the start of the second half. Maybe that'll do, even though it's not the most complex throw in the world, that'll do some world of good for the confidence of one Ryan Holinsky. I'm going to call it his best throw of the day. How's that? that that'll work. <laughs> there you see Ryan Holinsky, who changed his number in honor of his late brother, Tyler Holinsky, went to number three. Recruited by schools all over the country, decided he was ready to get away from home. His family has moved to Columbia, South Carolina. They're at the game here today, looking on and watching the young man make his first career road start, just his third start of his young career. Now Kelly Bryant, the savvy veteran, will try to respond here on a drive. On first down. There's a round tree, and he lumbers his way for a pickup of 10 and a first down. They come right back to that pulling the backside guard and tackle, down blocking from the front side, and they've had a crease there just about every time they've run that blocking scheme. Two tight ends set here for Missouri, Albert O and Daniel Parker on the field. Roundtree takes the handoff and is jammed up right at the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit by Wanham and Brunson. T.J. Brunson, the leading tackler the last two years for Carolina, the senior at Richland Northeast High School back in Columbia. Carolina goes to the nickel package on the second lock. Ryan hands off again, and again, it's bottled up right near the line. So good defense by that front for the Gamecocks, and it'll set up a third down. We'll call it five. The zone running game has not been effective for Missouri so far this afternoon. The pin-pull stuff where they block down and pull around has been their bread and butter. Four in the pattern for Bryant. Goes underneath, caught by Albert O. Banging bodies and picking up the first down. Derek Dooley called him a gamer. Said, you know, he's, he's been banged up and not giving him much in practice, but in the game, this is the guy you want to get the ball in his hands, and here's why. It took about five shots at him before they could get him down. Caught his 21st career touchdown pass in the first half. One out of four catches for Albert O goes for six. Bryant, nice ankle tackle in the open field by J.C. Horn, plus a penalty flag. Holding. Offense number 81. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. That's on Albert O, the tight end. Uh, by my unofficial count, Ray, that's about a handful of holding penalties. Yeah, and, and it's something that they have to clean up. 
Well, despite the bizarre answer we got from coach about those penalties, they've really hurt themselves throughout this season. Um, and when you get into a tight ball game, highly competitive, those things will back, come back to bite you. Well, now a first down and 20. As the senior Bryant rolls out right, buys time, contact, and no penalty flag. I thought Bukwabu looked like he might have been early on Jonathan Nance. I don't know. I want to see that one again because I thought it was pretty good, pretty good timing as far as getting there and reaching around the man. He never really touched yeah. it. Might, it might have been a little lower body contact, but they're not going to call that. The fans wanted one, that's for sure. All right. Fine play by the sophomore out of Louisiana, Israel Mukwabu. Second down and 20. Five in the pattern for Bryant. From the pocket, completes it near midfield. And that'll get some of that penalty yardage back. It'll set up a third down and 10. They love to hitch the ball on, on that empty formation. And what Kelly Bryant does is he surveys the field. He's got five receivers out there. And he picks it, uh, who he wants. He finds his Huckleberry, and he lets the ball go in that direction. Mizzou, 4 of 12 on third down. Five on the line for Carolina. Now they'll peel back. Play clock at five. Three man rush. Brian, all kinds of time, and it's complete. Into the hands of Jonathan Nance. I don't know. I, I think they're better off getting after him. As you said, really, it was only a two-man rush. Uh, Sterling was at nose, and he didn't really even get any penetration. You let Bryant pick you apart and stand back there, I don't know if that's good pool. Roundtree with some tough yards. Keeps the legs churning straight ahead. Plotting forward. He's a tough, strong runner. You look at him, and people tend to bounce off him. Fresh defensive line in for Carolina. Yeah, they're deep up front there. They like to roll those guys through. 12 personnel in for Mizzou on first down. On play action, Brian tips and incomplete. Fine play. Boy, he missed. That. Excuse me, Mike. He missed. Uh, Albert O was wide open running down the seam. I, I can't believe he, that wasn't his first look. He was running unfettered down the field. Watch him right here. Just going to come right down, and there's no one around him. Oh, you don't get that chance very often. How is there no one around the All-American Now, tight that's end? the question, isn't it? <laughs> we saw him score a touchdown earlier right. with no one around him. This is the guy they claimed they were going to double in this area of the field. Second down and 10. Blitz coming. Bryant dumps it off. And yards after catch for Beatty, who will find a path to the end zone. 21 yards and a score for the sophomore from Memphis. Little screen pass, and Trevor Wallace Sims had the key block pulling out there the big man in space. He got his man down, and Beatty's just able to cut inside. See the big man, 75, come out. Boom, corner's gone. Beatty's got a clear path to the end zone. Impressive 10 play, 75 yard drive. Big answer after that explosive play from Carolina. <clears throat> with Ray Bentley and Tara Talich, I'm Mike Morgan back with you here in Columbia, Missouri. Tigers back up by 10 after an impressive 10 play drive to respond to the one play scoring drive for the Gamecocks. So after a First half that was dominated thoroughly by defense. Offensive fireworks here to start the third quarter. Yeah, they get in locker rooms and draw up some new stuff based on what they're seeing. And a lot of times you, you, you identify and recognize good coaching staffs by that first couple drives in the third quarter. 
you know somebody's yeah. working down there. Well, you played some special teams your day. How big of a weapon is it to have Tucker McCann, your kicker, a touchback on virtually every kick? Oh, it's huge. It, uh, you know, I used to cover them kicks, and that was a love-hate thing. <laughs> and when you don't have to really blow anybody up after running 50 yards as hard as you yeah. can, you kind of love that, but you also kind of hate it a little bit. You know, you, you want to get that big hit, but to not have to worry about that type that play and a big return, that's huge for a defense. Ryan Holinsky has taken some hits today. Struggled in the first half, one for one in the second. Back to pass here. And that one is floating over the hands of Rico Dattle. I had to set up a screen. And South Carolina well schooled on that, or excuse me, Missouri well schooled on that. The defensive line slid over there and took it away from him. He kind of had to throw it away. Akeel Byers made the play. Blitz coming, and Olinsky just couldn't wait to get rid of it. Ryan Edwards was the only man in the area, so a rough start to this drive. Now third down and ten. They have not been good on third down, and a lot of them have been third and longs like this behind the chains. Puts undue pressure on the young quarterback to make a play. Hancock's 0 for 7 on third down. Timeout, Missouri. Prior to the snap. Timeout, Missouri. 30 seconds. We'll keep it here, Missouri. But their defensive coordinator, Ryan Walters, game is clock down operator, on Please put 1040 on the game clock. Down on the sideline. He did not like what he saw, and they, they decided to burn one real quick rather Thank than you. give up an easy third and ten. Yeah, Ryan Walters told us at the meetings he was actually in the booth earlier this year. First said, game. First game against Wyoming. He said, I will never do that again. Yeah. Just don't have the same feel as a defensive coordinator when yeah. you're away from the field. And the communication and looking in guys' eyes and getting, you know, getting them what they need when they need it. You can't do that upstairs. He's got Vernon Hargraves, Hargrave, his linebacker coach up there, and that's a really good set of eyes, so he can afford to be down on the field. Now here you are, your Carolina. You haven't converted on third down all game long. 0 for 7. This is third and 10. Ryan Holinsky trying to gain some confidence with a throw downfield. He's a target of tight end here today. That was his favorite receiver coming into this game, and they haven't gone to him at all. Pressure passes right on target, and breaking tackles is Edwards. Edwards, a load to bring down, finally wrestled down at the 43 yard line. That might be the best throw of the day for Ryan Olinsky. That was on the money to his number one guy, and I tell you, AC tries to make this tackle. But he's outweighed by about 30 pounds there, <laughs> and it showed. 18 yards, and the drive continues for Ryan Holinsky and the Gamecocks. Hand off up the middle, not much there for Rico Dowdle. Garrett and Bolt and those two inside linebackers show up to make the play. This is as good a tandem as uh, I've seen in a while. The way Bolton has kind of come along in a big hurry, and Garrett, he's he's one of the top linebackers in the country, in my estimation. Yeah, Bolton grew up in a great program in Texas, Lone Star High School in Frisco, Texas. Good future for that sophomore. Second down and eight. Down to the lone back. Alinsky buying time. Alinsky throws it away and a penalty flag. Could be in the area of holding. Dawkins was the intended target. Nobody open down the field, and when you get that, the quarterback gets antsy, starts moving around, and guys change their rush angle and they end up grabbing him. Holding. Offense number 50. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. Look down here at the bottom. Here's your hold. Hutcherson putting the wraps up on Turner.
So a second down and 19. Those are drive killers. Now they're, now they're off schedule, and the pressure again goes on the quarterback. I'm with you. I'm surprised we have not seen more Kyle Markway and Nick Muse, the tight ends. They were so effective yeah, last week. I'm mystified. Alinsky, clean pocket. Rifles one deep and in and out of the outstretched hands of Shy Smith. Smith is trying to catch his breath. So as a cover two, they had two safeties back in the corner, kind of sits down, and there's that little area in there that John Madden used to call the turkey hole. He tried to turkey hole him right there, but just a little overthrown and a little late with the throw. Got Markway down at the bottom of the screen now. There's a tight end flexed out. And they can get him involved. Alinsky giving up ground, throws off balance and completes it. What a throw, and there is the tight end, Kyle Markway. Yeah, they, they like the matchup when they get him out on the edge. He's going against Christian Holmes, and this is a timing route. <laughs> a really nice throw. Uh, going off to your left and throwing a ball like that on a dime, that's as good as it gets right there. I mean, I don't think we were overselling it at the beginning of this broadcast. I, I don't know what we've been looking at so far, but he has special arm talent. I mean, he is unique in that regard. This is going to be fourth down and one. They tried to sugar huddle him at a quick little huddle right in front of the ball. And they were going to try to pop out of there and run one quick. And didn't work out. I love the call here. Is it going for it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, you're. I look, agree. You're, I, yeah, you're, you're down you're 10 down here. 10, and I mean, you, you, you made a couple of big plays in this drive already to keep it alive. So keep the momentum rolling. You got Official two physical backs in Feaster and Dowdle. And they may take another look at the spot. Equipment failure. Not sure which equipment they're talking about, but. You know, they have the electronic uh, down markers over there now. Uh -huh. And they were not correct, and I think that was the issue. Yeah, I thought one of them said first down, and then I saw. The Gamecocks were rushing to the line. They knew it was fourth down. Don't forget, coming up at 7.30 Eastern, it's going to be San Jose State taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks. That is our SEC Saturday night matchup. Arkansas Time trying out. to pick up Missouri a head coach. And a conference Dane. win before they the get back into conference play. Nick Starkle, the quarterback, looks like they've settled on him for the rest of the way, and Chad Morris if you give Chad Morris a guy who can make quality throws, he'll put points on the board. And that's what they've been searching for there. They've gone through a myriad of guys and arms to try to get it settled, and it looks like Starkle's going to be that guy. Let's see what Starkle has done thus far after gaining the job as a starting quarterback. 305 passing yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Makes all the difference in the world in that Chad Morris style of offense where you, you've got to have a trigger man who could deliver it for it. Any offense for that matter. It's been a large part of the problem for Carolina today is Dolsky has not been very accurate, which is surprising. Uh, we're, we're about to see one of his best throws of the day. They're actually reviewing whether or not the pass was complete by Mark Way. Well, he, it did come out of his hands after he was about five yards out of bounds in the bench area. And you got to bring it all the way back and hand it to the official these days. I well, I mean, if, if this is overturned, it completely changes that man's decision making. Will Muschamp, you're not going to go for it on fourth and long. He wasn't going to the ground. He stays he's up there. He's got it. Now, when he d he's five, six yards out of field, destroying our equipment. And that's when the ball comes out. So again, the ruling on the field was a completed pass. So do you have indisputable video evidence to overturn that? I, I would think not. Yeah, I, I think that play has to stand. 
just because the ball did not come. He wasn't right. going to the ground right. and it popped out. Right. He didn't go to the ground until he was five yards out of, out of bounds. Review, the ruling on the field stands. Missouri will be charged the second time out of the half and will have no more challenges for the remainder of the game. Okay, so there you go. We'll see yeah. if that becomes a factor later in this game. But first things first. I don't really blame Barry Odom for challenging that either. Because it, he did, it happened right on the sideline in front of him. He saw it come out. He's like, wait a minute. So it brings us back to that fourth and one. Dowdle is the back behind Holinsky. And they fake it to him and then throw it. And it's complete at the 35 to Kyle Markway. Gutsy call. And it comes up well for Carolina. I thought he was going to throw it outside to Chandler Farrell, who I thought was pretty much open. But he stuck with Markway and makes a beautiful throw on an excellent route. I am stunned that they didn't run it there on fourth and one. That's a gutsy call. That is a big time gutsy call. Feaster now in it back. First and 10 from the 35 as the drive continues. Owinski on Cork Swan, and now he's starting to catch rhythm. Caught that one. Did Brian Edwards, his favorite target, and all of a sudden, Owinski's arm seems to be loosened up. 23 yards. It's a tough cover on number 89, Brian Edwards, because he has the speed to run past you, so you've got to respect him when he's running all out and then he puts the brakes on and comes back to the ball and the timing was there. Uh, first down little jet sweep to Edwards Edwards galloping past the 20 and upended at the 19. Great vision by Edwards cutting that thing up there in the B gap instead of outside where it's generally designed to go. They have an unbalanced line X off X is Edwards and they got blockers over there on the front end but great vision cutting that up when he did. Second down, Feaster pummeled right near the line of scrimmage. Just nothing there. Those two linebackers were there. Yeah. Bolton and Garrett showed up together. And those guys are momentum stuffers because I started to get the feel like the Carolina was feeling it a little bit. This guy said, No, you're not. That's one of the better duos of linebackers in this league, Nick Bolton and Kale Garrett. On third down, Owinski missiles one to the 15 and out of bounds. First down yardage. First down for Shai Smith, the junior out of Union, South Carolina. Holinsky's starting to look like Holinsky right now. Yes, he is. This is the quarterback we've seen the last two weeks. Throwing dimes and very accurate, good timing here in the second half. 12th play of the drive. Holinsky whips it over to the near side and knocked out of bounds. Tavian Feaster. Out of the backfield makes the grab. A pickup of five. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden Ryan Polinski has got it going again. He's back in that group. You can almost see the, the confidence that he has. He's hit eight out of 11 here in the second half, and he's been throwing strikes, whereas he was just a bit outside. Yes, early he in this was. Game. He's bad pinpoint accuracy here in this third quarter. Second down, Feaster. Plowing ahead for a couple. It'll be third down from the three. Now Ryan Holinsky, you know, one of the things they just marvel about, including the Missouri coaches, his composure is poised. He just doesn't act like a true freshman. Nothing seems to phase this young man. Looks like he took the tape off of the inside of his elbow that I he noticed had on that. earlier. And maybe that was hindering. Third and goal from the three. Play action, pass is picked Boom. off. Picked off by Mizzou and a whole lot of daylight ahead. Run out Perkins down the sideline. Perkins. Touchdown.
return for the senior out of St. Louis. Uh, it was a gift, too. I mean, that ball was thrown right into his chest. Another pick six for this Mizzou defense. That's their third on the year and their second defensive touchdown today. As you mentioned, a flat out gift. They stayed with the hot hand on third and short. And Helinski makes. Uh, Ryan Helinski, again, every game is a teaching moment, and that one's certainly a teaching moment. You're three yards away from making this a three point game, and an ill advised throw returned 100 yards to the house. That's two gift wrap scores for this Missouri defense today. That's the difference in the game. Gamecocks will set up shop at the 25, and Ryan will have to shake it off in a hurry. And I think this is a case of tunnel vision because here's your defender, and watch Holinsky. He just never sees him despite the fact that he's right in the throwing lane. It won't get any easier than that for Ronald Perkins. Third pick six of the year for this Missouri defense. Remember the three losses in a row. The first thing that Coach Odom told us that was the biggest factor, minus seven turnover margin combined in those three losses. Today, it's Missouri winning the battle of turnovers. Points off of turnovers for sure. They're 2-2 on turnovers, but they've scored on both of theirs. Yeah, how about this? Missouri, 41 points off turnovers this season. That's, that's what you call capitalizing. That, that feeds your defense when they know they can do something and then it changes a game that gets guys flying around Olinsky Over the middle complete Nick Muse and there is the other tight end Nick Muse the transfer from William and Mary He was a primary target last week against Alabama as we got a player down so maybe Jordan Elliott for Missouri Now it's your chance to help people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Go to redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate now. Certainly a great cause. 31-14, Mizzou on top, 5-12 to play in the third quarter. And it was Jordan Elliott who was injured on that last play. He was able to walk off the field and they put Markel Utzi in there on his third and short. And they give it to Dowdle. I don't know if he got there. And the ball comes out and Missouri recovers it. Akil Byers made the hit. He might have recovered the football, forced the fumble. And made the tackle the trifecta for the backup defensive tackle. There's the hit. Yup, balls out and it lands right in the belly of Byers. He's like, oh, look what I got down here. And another takeaway for this Missouri defense. That is a backbreaker for Carolina. And a huge play by the junior out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. Take a shot here. That's what I'd do. Got them on their heels. Keel Byers comes up big. Mizzou try to make them pay here. Bryant buying time and then sees nobody open. will throw it away. And they wanted. A shot they had two guys deep in the end zone both of them covered up extremely well so Bryant makes the smart veteran play and just tosses it into the dirt amazing how often that play is called right you get the turnover defense has to rush out there and you go for the kill shot Yeah, that sudden change defense comes out there they're on their heels already from the get go and that's a great time to attack you look at Barry Odom former Mizzou player longtime assistant coach and interim coach and now head coach 
Round tree. Trying to find Dave out of the left side. Nice open field tackle that time. And then a cleat is thrown, and that's going to draw penalty flags. R.J. Roderick made a great play, and then he made a silly play. Yeah, and then Roundtree pushed him afterwards. Don't be throwing my shoes around, man. That's serious. I mean, why? You just made a highlight tackle. Yeah, not a smart football play. I, I After know. the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 10. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. That's number 10's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. 15 first yard time. penalty, and RJ Roderick throws this cleat about 15 yards. Yeah, it makes the old shoestring tackle and then says, I don't need this. Which is, you know, emotions get to you a little bit. Young player down there, what am I going to do with this shoe? I don't need it. Boom, throw it without even thinking. And that's the problem. You have to think, you got to be on top of it. Third penalty of the day on the Gamecocks. Missouri has two on first down. Bryant again with time. Floats one over the middle. That, was that deflected at the line? It might have been a change of heart <laughs> midway through the throw. I mean, that throw was to like, no one. I like this. He had a man running into the end zone, and I can't tell if Kinlaw tipped it or not. Definitely distracted Bryant on the throw. Look at it here. Yeah, he got it. it looks he got like. a piece. Brian in trouble, sacked. Multiple white jerseys in on the play. They ran a little game with Sterling, who was on the outside at defensive end. He looped inside and. It was not picked up by the offensive line, and it was over before it really got started. Javon Kinlaw also there. That's the man he did that little twist with. Both of them got free. So the sack backs up Missouri to the 24-yard line. Third down at 19. Got to get a stop here. Here for the Gamecocks. And it's Roundtree slipping and falling at the 20-yard line. Uh, Mizzou will take the field goal unit out onto the field led by Tucker McCann. More points off of turnovers here in the offing if they can make this field goal. McCann's only missed one all year. This one from 39. Missed it wide right. So just the second miss of the year for the senior. And the Gamecocks get a stop. Uh, my most inspirational teacher would be uh, Miss Claudine Schofield. Uh, she teaches over at Conway High School. She was my most inspirational teacher just because she always helped out. And whenever I needed something, she would go out, up above and beyond just to help me and get everything right. So that's my most inspirational teacher. And in honor of that and so many that have had inspirational teachers, Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual celebration led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that honors great teachers across the country. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard or search the hashtag Extra Yard Week. Alinsky cocks and fires a deep ball down the sideline, and it's caught. Adjusting on the short throw right on cue, it's Brian Edwards. a nice uh, back shoulder type fade. You watch this defender and he's not looking for the ball and he, and, and he shouldn't until the receiver the does. Third. He didn't quite ever get Offense, around. Number 89. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. And they got first Edwards down. on the flag. That's going to drive the direction. That penalty is half the distance from the previous spot. Even crazier because that was a nice execution on that play. Big chunk play and now it comes back. Uh, little push off at the end and can't get away with that. Uh, that changes everything. Backed up to the ten and a half. 
First down and 22 officially. And off, bouncing outside and brought down shortly there after is Tavian Feaster. Uh, speaking of teachers and the importance that they have, Barry Odom shared a story with us. Of course, his mother was a longtime teacher, Cheryl Odom. In fact, he says he got a chance to teach early on when he was a high school football coach. He was a high school football coach at Rockbridge High School. And he said, well, what did you teach? He goes, P.E. I was the best darn P.E. teacher there ever was in Columbia. And I got to believe him. And we've got, I believe it's Holinsky down in the end zone. Now he's up. Took a hit after that play. He's going to get sandwiched there by a couple of guys. And then the, the full weight of the 315-pound Jordan Elliott yeah. landed on him. Yeah, and, and see, in the NFL, now they actually call that a flag. If you pile drive a guy with all your weight, but in the college game, you still see guys get away with that. I don't know how that one would have been avoidable. I mean, you just collapsed him. And right. How do you avoid landing on him? I'd hate to see a foul on something like that. Mm -hmm. But that brings in to carry on Joyner in the quarterback role on a third and forever. Yeah, this is to carry on hasn't thrown a pass in a while. Probably won't hear either, to yeah, be honest not, with you. Yeah, third and 19, it's a lot to ask. And the red shirt freshman. Lord Charleston. They need the 31. Four man rush and a quick slant gets them up to the 19. A little breathing room for the punting team. Unless they elect to go, and I don't imagine they will. Yeah, we've yeah. seen some crazy things today. So that, that is true. <laughs> I wouldn't rule anything There's out, been nothing orthodox about this no. game at all. I like unorthodox. Yeah, I, yeah, this yeah. is right, right up my alley. You like here. chaos. Yeah. You're a man that thrives in chaos. It's served me well over the years, brother. <laughs> Charlton on the punt. One of the better legs in the SEC. High spiraling great kick all the way back to the 25 fair catch 56 yard punt and no return and how about the second half for Kelly Bryant. Yeah he's been a different guy making really nice throws good decisions moving the ball putting points on the board just operating this offense and that's really all they, they don't ask him to be a, a superstar tremendous playmaker. They want him to distribute the football. And that's what he does. We thought we might actually see a few more deep balls than we've seen. They're usually good for at least eight or so of those downfield. On first down, to the ground, Tyler Beatty. And a loss on the play, he goes backwards two yards. Talked about the importance of this game for both these teams. Gamecocks have won three in a row in the series, both looking for their first conference win of the year. I think most people considered this a swing game at the beginning of the year. Then you lose Jake Bentley for the season, longtime veteran quarterback. Pass complete. Dragging defenders down to the 32 yard line. That's Daniel Parker, the tight end. But then all of a sudden, Ryan Holinsky gives you hope because he looks great in his first start. And then I would say better than good in his second start really? against yes. Alabama with the throws he made there. So I, I, even though the Vegas had this about a nine point game, I think most people thought this would be a swing game for both these teams. Ryan missiles one over the middle, complete again to Parker. Well, if Albert O. Goes pro after this season. You're looking at the future and number 82, Daniel Parker. The future looks bright. And Mizzou up two touchdowns and a field goal, content to just let the clock run out and get ready for quarter number four. Thirty-one fourteen. Your score heading into quarter number four here in Como. 
Gamecocks, Tigers. A lot of defense in the first half, a lot of offense in the second. Back with you here in Columbia, Missouri. It's the Tigers lead of the Gamecocks, 31-14. Keep an eye on Tyler Holinski, who was a little bit shaken up after the last play. He was in the tent for a little bit. Keep an eye out on his situation as the pass is caught once again by Parker, who's become a primary target of Kelly Bryant here in the second half. And he does something when he catches it, too. A little submarine boot. He ran behind the line, which hides him from the coverage, and that gives him a couple steps, and it's an easy toss and catch for Bryant. Off Beatty and a penalty flag drops behind the line. Could be another holding call, and Missouri's already had a handful of those. Yeah, I think you're right. Right on the edge when Beatty made that cut outside, the defender changed his angle, and the instinct is to grab him real quick, and that's what he did. Holding offense number 55, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, second down. You go back to what Derek Dooley, offensive coordinator, told us the keys were to this game. Number one, protect the ball. Okay, well, not exactly an A-plus there. Right. Big plays. They've certainly had a few of those. Dominate third down and red zone. They've been certainly better than Carolina on third down in this game. The penalties, that continues to kind of be an issue, but not a big enough issue when you're up 17. Oh, they, he'll be happy with what they did today, but... There'll still be some teaching moments. Bryant zigging, zagging, and weaving his way a couple yards shy of the first down. And with an update, here's Dari Noka. Boy, Dory, that's uh, I mean, that is a huge win for Gus Malzahn and company. Uh, seems like every couple weeks there's talk about Gus being on the hot seat as Jonathan Johnson hauls that one in for a first down, and then he does something like that. People are ready to crown Texas A&M this year. You got Bama, you got LSU, and now Auburn certainly belongs in the discussion. Yeah, early on, it's a roller coaster for a lot of teams. A good one week, and then not so much the next. Again, Johnson, this time on the near side, and he'll have first down yardage to the 27-yard line. Derek Dooley has started to figure this thing out. He's calling some really nice plays. Yeah. Guys are wide open, and this offense is executing. Well, Derek Dooley is a great story in his own right. If you go back to Derek Dooley's days, he gets the head coaching job at Tennessee. Tennessee was starting to decline already. It does not go well for Derek Dooley. He'd be the first one to tell you. Then he has to kind of start over, hit the reset button, goes to the NFL ranks as a wide receivers coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Derek's in there. I He's promise. up there somewhere. He's up That's there behind calling the them plays. camouflage glass. And, and then to get the phone call from Barry Odom. And Barry Odom told us, he said, look, I, I knew a coach that I trusted with the Cowboys. I asked him, I said, what do you think of Derek Dooley? He said, the guy's been great here. I would hire him. Yeah, get him if you can. And you're talking about a guy that knows the SEC, knows how to recruit, knows how to call plays, and he'll be the first one to tell you he's a better coach now than he was 10 years ago. He is becoming a bit of a quarterback guru. Uh -huh. What he did with Drew Locke's game in this offense, particularly at the end of the year last year, and now he's getting the feel for Kelly Bryant. We asked him, do you know him? Fully yet? He goes, no, nah, I'm still learning them, learning them, but we're getting them, we're getting them better, and they've shown that here this afternoon. Derek Dewey was a big part of the sales pitch, if you will, for Kelly Bryant to come to Missouri. Big hole up the middle, and a first down run for Roundtree. Roundtree is the kind of guy you just don't want to face in this situation, and now a late penalty flag. Some frustration boiling over, perhaps, on the Gamecock side of things. Yeah, and this defense is getting worn out. Yeah. I mean, that's over 70 plays for Missouri in this game, and 
South Carolina has only run 49. And the time of possession After is 10 play. minutes. 10 minutes different. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number six. Filters half the distance from the end of the run. First down. That's on T.J. Brunson, and again, that's a senior. You know, the one on Roderick, you say, oh, he's a sophomore. He's young. He'll learn. You don't expect that out of your senior. That's two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. And when you get fatigued, the discipline goes. That's, that's the first thing, and, and we're seeing that manifested by this tired defense right now. Missouri methodically moving downfield on this drive. Roundtree again. Been a steady dose of the junior tailback out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Squeezes out a yard. It'll be second and goal. And Missouri will look back at this drive if they finish this thing off as a huge growth moment for this offense and this football team. Putting somebody away yep. by being physical, running straight at them, executing on offense, and working your way down the field with discipline. It's part of this offense we, we didn't get a, a good gauge on, even from the coaches, the O-line. You know, it, they had to replace a couple of starters. Nobody considered it a weakness, but I don't know if anybody would label them a strength. They've been a strength today. They have. Bryant running for his life. He's blasted at about the five. Well, that play goes nowhere. It'll be third down and goal. Not sure what he's pointing at. Usually you get that first down signal from guys these days, but... That's not even an option here. Yeah. <laughs> it's touchdown or bust. Bryant stacked up and wrapped up for a loss. That was a weird looking play, kind of shaky. It didn't look like Roundtree knew if he was supposed to get a fake or what he was doing. He kind of just stopped a little bit, and Bryant just kind of fought, fell in behind him. Not a great way to finish that drive. I, I was just making a big deal out of him. Staley on the tackle for the Gamecocks. Now a 25-yarder for Tucker McCann. This time he knocks it through. Missouri up by three touchdowns, 9-17 to go here in Como. Our eight-point documentary that chronicles the history of SEC football. Tuesday at 9, it's part four. A whole lot of the bear, plus the role sports on TV played on the SEC, led by one Keith Jackson. You can see only Saturdays in the South, only right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. If you haven't covered that, really, really good stuff. That part four will cover 71 to 79. I don't care how old or young you are, you will learn something watching that series. I can't wait to relive those, those 70s, man. Yeah, right? Those were glory years. Now, it has not been a glorious day for this Gamecock offense. They got one touchdown set up by a turnover, and they just punched it in from a yard out. And then they had one one play drive on a 75 yard touchdown pass to Brian Edwards. So basically their two scores have come on two one yard drives thus far. Halinski started off erratic and then has really been sharp for the most part of the second half minus a key pick six with the Gamecocks threatening and that really is where this game has turned completely. Now down three scores here with over nine minutes to go and there's a sack. And that is Jordan Elliott. And Jordan Elliott, when he hits you, you feel it. All 6'4", 315 pounds of him. Elliott has really lived up to what uh, Coach Ryan Walters thought he has in him. You know, a Sunday-type player, able to get through there and, and just disrupt an offense. He's a big man that can move. And you see the proof of it right there with a little, little uh, give him one way and give the leg and then take it away and go the other way around. That's pretty good movement for a big guy. Give Holinsky credit. He's been hanging in there. Tough. Beat up here today. Tough kid. Five wide set. And trying to thread the needle on that one, but it's well covered. Intended for Feaster. Now, last year, Ryan Holinsky was basically a high school kid trying to figure out where he wanted to go to school. 
there's, still, there's no question. I mean, the future is bright for him at South yeah. Carolina. It's just there's a lot of learning on the but job right now. The, the times have changed, though. These these young, true freshman quarterbacks, they come in ready to play now. It's amazing what the success a lot of these guys have had. Mizzou just pinning their ears back now. That's Whiteside on the sack. Oh, two sacks on the drive. Ryan Olinsky taking a beating here in this fourth quarter. Now Missouri's front line got into pass rush mode given the, the situation yeah. in the ball game, the score, and the time left. You know they're going to throw. Forget the run, man. Pin your ears back and get them stats, and that's what these guys are doing. Floyd waiting on the punt. Takes it at the 40. And is brought down immediately for a loss. 7.36 to go. Missouri up by 20. SEC Network, San Jose State taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks in the SEC Saturday night matchup. Somebody who knows a thing or two about Arkansas living over there in the Ozarks, Tara Talmadge. Tara, what do you have? Well, just a fun fact about Nick Starkle. He's new to the program, but this guy is feeling right at home. He wears a Justin Bieber T-shirt under his pads every single game. He warms up in it as well. I've spoken with him about it a few times, and he just says he's a big fan. Whether it's good luck or bad luck, he's going to sport it. Wow. True believer. What, what T-shirt did you wear when you were a player? I'm thinking more uh, uh, Alice Cooper. Actually. Alice Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Yeah, and I painted, Motley Crue I, maybe. Nah, just Alice. I painted my face up with his eye black. The really? Streaks running down. And, did, oh yeah. Did it you was, travel with a snake? No, that's where I drew the line. You drew the line there. Yeah, yeah, no I reptiles. Somewhere, but. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne was. Alice got a team? bad rep. No, I, I like Ozzy. Okay. Um, I wore a 10,000 Maniacs one too. Oh as wow. A, Tribute to uh, you know that band was from Jamestown, New York, not far from Buffalo when I played there, and so got me into a couple free concerts, which is <laughs> nice. Uh, second down and long here for Mizzou. Bryant still in the game, and so is this guy. This is Larry Roundtree with first down yardage on another big pickup, 14 yards. And they just worn this this Gamecocks defense out. I mean, that's you're seeing the manifestation of that right now, and it's because you know Mizzou's had the ball for basically over 33 minutes right now, and they've run so many more plays that it's just. I mean, look at the disparity in in this time of possession. That, that wears a defense down big time, especially when they start running on, at, at you and pounding on you every play. We're seeing that happen right now as Missouri's just imposed their will. Missouri certainly open to bleeding some clock here. As we are now at the six minute mark of this ball game. And, you know, the loss to Wyoming, and we asked the staff, how in the world did that game get scheduled? It happened like 10 years ago. So <laughs> a lot has changed here at Mizzou yeah. in the last 10 years, but something tells me you won't see them in Laramie anytime soon. That's a tough place to go and get a W, and, and they played, I tell you, Wyoming hit them in the mouth. Mm -hmm. They played as physical on both sides of the ball as, it, as I've seen in a long time, and, and that, that's how they won the ball game. Elevation will play some, some tricks on some guys. They've never been to Wyoming, and I don't think anybody on that roster had... Uh, been in Laramie before, so they lose that game, and then you know it's typical reaction from everybody. Oh, what's yeah. wrong with Mizzou? Were they overrated? And was there too much hype going in? You had some people talking about a potential 8 0 start when they looked at that schedule. And, and since then, I mean, they've dominated. And once again, they put 31 plus points on the board. That's nine straight games. The offense has been clicking, the defense might be unheralded at this point but certainly has some playmakers They've given up 14 points in the last three games right. now and, and so that that's pretty good and they uh, all the coaches said that the team responded to that disappointment in a really great positive way instead of panicking and pointing fingers 
they took it on themselves to get back to work and clean the things up that were wrong and boy they did a great job of it. well let's face it uh, everybody and their grandmother is going to have georgia winning the east this year uh, florida did win today tennessee right now is reeling uh, but in a lot of ways you can make the case second place in the east is still very much up for grabs uh, i believe it is you know you got season ending injuries at quarterback for three of the teams in this division obviously mizzou now has a leg up on carolina they'll have florida at home that'll be later on this season this is a, certainly a team that can compete in that eastern division backspin on that kick and down at the 12 gamecocks take over when we come back SEC scoreboard, really no surprises here, other than perhaps the fact that Auburn goes on the road and wins in College Station, but I'd call that a mild upset, if at all. Controversy in Oxford, California, knocks down the Rebels, and Mississippi State leading Kentucky. Joiner in at quarterback now for the Gamecocks, and throws one to the turf. Yeah, his feet weren't set right. That was an all-arm type throw. A good throw starts with the feet on the ground in the right direction. That ball's on the money, and that'll be a first down complete to Brian Edwards. Got to give it up to Brian Edwards. I mean, throughout all this, he's got, he's got a freshman quarterback that he's got to adjust to. I beg your pardon, that's actually Dawkins. On the reception, Chavis Dawkins. Still got to give Edwards a lot I'm, of credit. I'm still yeah, giving, yeah. I'm still throwing out bouquets <laughs> yes, sir. to Brian Edwards because he played a whale of a game. You got to remember, he goes from Jake Bentley, a guy he's been used to for three years, then they had to make a switch to a, a new quarterback. And then you wonder how much of this young man you're going to see to carry on Joyner in, in the coming weeks, at least to give Ryan Olinsky a a little bit of a, a break from time to time, a change of pace. Join her more in that Savelle Newton mold. If Gamecock fans certainly will remember that name, former quarterback and wide receiver, going back to the Steve Spurrier era. Well, Helensky hadn't been hit like he was hit today, to date. You know, they didn't really get after him that much against Alabama last week. They protected him pretty well. He took some shots here this afternoon. Yeah, there's no, nothing questioning his toughness and Again, stayed composed. He'd love to have that one, the pick six back. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a ball. Dude, that was a 14-point swing. Yep. If they score there, it's a three-point three game. Three-point game. Instead, it goes the other way. And he was just starting to catch fire after a really shaky first half. And better days ahead for that young freshman who's got a chance to be a really good one the next few years in the SEC. Joyner uncorks a deep ball, and that is almost a one-handed pick. Tyree Gillespie, who's the fastest player on the Missouri team, almost made a sensational grab. And not on the same page with the receiver, and it almost became costly the fourth potential turnover of the afternoon, but Gillespie wasn't quite able to one-hand that thing. That would have been a top tenner if he'd have got that. Absolutely. And now third down and six. Joiner over the middle and a nice grab by Mark Way. We thought we'd see more Kyle Mark Way in this game. Yeah. Young man out of St. Louis, Missouri. I think it's just his third catch, probably fourth or fifth target. And then Nick Muse with only one grab on the day. They used the tight ends a lot up till this date. Maybe they thought it was time to change that, give Missouri a different look. They weren't set. Mark Way, whose uncle played in Iowa. A lot of his family and friends here for this game, not too far from his hometown of St. Louis. I heard he bought like a whole section. Of yeah. Almost Ball 70 start. people. Come 89 of the offense. All 11 players were not set for a second. First down. Five-yard penalty, first down. Can't really blame that one on Edwards. That's on Joyner, the quarterback. He didn't look to make sure his receivers were set on the outside, called for the snap. Edwards over 100 yards receiving and a touchdown today. 
caught in the flat. And weaving his way down the sideline, Nick Muse, the transfer from Wave and Mary. All Colonial Athletic Conference player last year for Wave and Mary. Nice transfer pickup for this offense. It's a little underutilized this afternoon. And, you know, th these reps might seem meaningless in terms of the outcome of the game. They mean everything to, to carry on Jordan. Jordan, who's trying to prove he belongs, overshoots. Smith on that play, but to carry on Joyner is a young man who was electric in high school. He led his team to the state championship at Fort Dorchester. Uh, they they want to find ways to get him on the field, whether it's at quarterback, right. whether it's at wide receiver. He's just he's too electric to not use him. Well, once they determined Holinsky was going to be the backup in training camp, they moved Joyner to receiver. And then, of course, when Jake Bentley got injured, they had to move him back into quarterback, and now he does both. Joyner buying time, looking in zone, and nothing there. That should be a penalty, and it sure will. No, that just makes no sense. McGuire pushes him two yards out of bounds. That's a freshman, true freshman, Isaiah McGuire. No need, and he'll get a talking to by head coach Barry Odom. That should move it half the distance, right? After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense number 99. Half the distance, first down. Joiner a chance to maybe try to put one in the end zone here. Mm -hmm. Scored last week against Alabama on, on, a, on a little running play. Yeah, still in search of his first career touchdown pass. A minute 28 to play. And Joyner goes down. Too much time. Kobe Whiteside says, uh-uh. Second one for Kobe Whiteside yeah. on the day. And this is the time when uh, defensive linemen like to eat. Late in the game when you know they're going to throw. First card time out of the half. South Carolina. Game clock operator. Who's the 121 back in the game clock? 121 on the game clock. Their fifth consecutive conference win. That's the second longest streak since they joined the SEC, and they'll snap a three-game losing streak to the Gamecocks. There was no question. They had this game circled for a while. This was one that was going to be potential impetus for something good this season as Joyner bounces off defenders running for his life and then just throws it away on second goal. Uh, winning the opener the SEC opener for Missouri is a nice harbinger for them because in their tenure in the SEC they've done that twice and they've won their division each of those times. That's right. So, too early what are you to trying celebrate? to say? Uh, too early to celebrate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still seven All on the right, schedule. Right, right, but I'm not quite there. If history is any indicator, yeah. you know it does repeat itself. It, it does. Who knows? Georgia might have something to say about that, and that game will be between the hedges. Georgia, of course, big game tonight against Notre Dame. The prohibited favorites to win the East as Joyner throws, completes it at the four. That's Shai Smith. Missouri has lost the last five to the Georgia Bulldogs, so that will certainly be a tough one. I, I think the Florida game here Second charge time is as big half. as South any Carolina. left on the schedule. 30 seconds. I think that's a, a winnable game. You see, I mean, you, Ole Miss, high percentage to win. At Vandy, at Kentucky, swing game. At Georgia, major underdog. That for, can you circle that for me, Ray Bentley? You Which got one? to tell the, it. The, the major Florida game. underdog one? Oh, no, the other one. Hey, hey, all right. You get to play one. with all the toys. I just sit here and talk. I, I love the toys. I think too. that one determines a lot for Missouri in terms of how their overall season is looked at at the end of the year. They uh, have a, a rare five game homestand that they're in the middle of right mm -hmm. now. So it'll be interesting to see when they go on the road how, how their ability is to handle things there. They're only one on the road thus far, as we mentioned that Wyoming loss in the open. Fourth down and goal. Joiner looking to run. 
throws it up last second when his intended target was on his back. That's Kyle Markway. Markway tripped just as Joyner flipped the ball in the air. He almost got it rolling around on his back. Watch him come through a little scissors route. The two men cross. Joyner's moving up in the pocket. He saw it, but the turf monster takes out Markway. Tonight on the SEC Network, after San Jose State, Arkansas, join the SEC Now team as the guys recap all of today's games with highlights, analysis, interviews, and more. Love the job that Dari, Coach Chiswick, and Chris Doring do each and every Saturday night. Get you right back up to speed is what they do. They really do. And you get to see extended highlights. It's not just two or three really recap the games thoroughly one after the other in the Southeastern Conference as Missouri will line up victory formation here for the final 51 seconds. Every coach will tell you this is his favorite play to call. Oh yeah. Now, two years ago Kelly Bryant led his Clemson Tigers to victory over the Gamecocks. Threw for a couple of scores in that one today. Similar numbers through the two more touchdowns. And Kelly Bryant has a victory over Carolina in a Missouri uniform. I thought he really got into his rhythm in the second half. This whole offense did. That'll do it. Missouri improves to three and one, and more importantly, a one and zero oh mark in the Southeastern Conference. Take a bye next week to get healthy and then get it on again. They got Troy and then they start the meet of the SEC schedule. The battle for the Mayor's Cup is won by Mizzou and it's the first win against the Gamecocks since 2015. 34 14, your final score here in Columbia. Boy, the, the big play of the game, we talked about it already, was the Holinsky interception. On the goal line that went 100 yards the other yeah. direction, a 14 point swing, could have been a three point game.